G'day fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the northeast side of the map, playing as the Holy Roman Empire, the English, and the Malians. We've got one of the best teams coming out of China, Louis MT, Yui Metal, and B. That's not 3DB, that is a different B, that, that, that is a B of a different name, a different man. On the other side of the map though, playing. Also, as the Malians, as the Holy Roman Empire, but as the Mongols, we've got Crackity here, Lash and Core. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the King of the Hill. This is the Winter Team Championship, hosted by EGC TV. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, there's a good chance, uh, if you've, uh, if it's within like the first five or six hours of this being uploaded, that EGC TV is live at the moment with day two of this event so if you'd like to go check that out i'll leave a link in the description to where you can catch it but other than that let's get into the game let's talk a little bit about what we can expect to happen because this game is king of the hill and as the name suggests it is so important to be king of this hill a single sacred site sets this stage apart from any other game really changes the way that the landscape plays and forces you to be aggressive in this game if you're not aggressive there's a really good chance that you're just going to get locked out of that sacred site and trying to gain it, a foothold back on that sacred site is just going to hurt you even more. But we begin to see men at arms coming out across the map right now. But before it reaches the enemy base, a quick word from our sponsor for this video. It's Patreon. Are you keen to get better at Age of Empires 4? Are you interested in watching someone else get coached or getting some one-on-one -on -one coaching for yourself? If so, check out the Patreon, where you can find dozens of coaching videos where I personally guide players through the process of improvement with new videos being added every single week. With coaching for all skill levels and for all civilizations, there's something for everyone. Now, when it comes to my credentials, while I might not be the Red Bull Walla Lol champion, I'm still a pretty decent skill level, sitting at the Conqueror 3 ranking for 1v1. So if you are interested in some coaching, make sure you check out the Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description. Now let's get back to the action. All right, so the Men at Arms actually turns around and decides to go to a different location. We're gonna ride on board with the team in the north and see exactly what they see. You can hear the scouts calling out across the map. Now a second Men at Arms gonna be coming down. So opening up with quite a heavy amount of Men at Arms here. Now Men at Arms in 3v3 are actually such a great unit. And part of the reason why, let's let's actually switch these over. There we go, get them on the right side over there. Men at Arms are so good in 3v3 because think about a 1v1 situation, right? You pump out Men at Arms, what are you doing? You're denying gold, you're denying stone. It's not that bad. But now all of a sudden you put that into three oh players. God. And you're denying one player's gold, one player's stone, and the other player's gold. So basically, it just gives you three targets. And you've got significant impunity when you're fighting out with the men-at-arms in the Dark Age. There's really not a lot that your enemy can do. And we can see attention going to be drawn towards the Uvu. Early stages of the game. Double horsemen have come out so far. Lash looking to defend here. Age up's going to be coming through shortly. We can hear Louis aging up now. Going to be going with the Saharan Trade Network. Bit of a weird spot for this trade network to come down. Typically, what you're looking to do uh, when you're when you're doing trade on a map like this is because there's there's no trade post on this map. Normally, there's a, a neutral trade post, but this map doesn't have it. So what you'd be doing is a corner to corner trade uh, on, on on in the in this position. So the fact that he's gone for the Saharan Trade Network and it's here this is a bit curious to me. Now, I, I will say this much: Louis is currently ranked number three on the ladder, so. He probably knows a bit better than I, but uh, just to provide a, a bit of insight, by putting the Saharan Trade Network here, he's going to actually have to build another outpost up the front here, and it's not going to be pulling in the same amount of food. Uh, the Saharan Trade ne Network obviously pulls in quite a lot of food, but the age ups are coming through. Core aging up now to the feudal age. One of the interesting things to note here is for both of these teams, we have got the Malian Holy Roman Empire combo. This combo is taking over team games. If you're not using this combo in team games, on the rank ladder, you're going to have a bad time because there's, there's a pretty good likelihood your enemy will be using it. The, the question for me is the third civilization. What is the third civ going to be? Because for these civilizations, oh, that town center, that's that's going to be a dead scout. Indeed it is. Call going to be losing his scout right there. So the Malians and the Holy Roman Empire work incredibly well together. And the reason why that is, is because the villager from the Malians comes out, builds a mill in the base of the Holy Roman Empire player, and just pumps out cows onto this Arkan Chapel. The Arkan Chapel buffs up the villagers so that they're gathering an extra 40% faster. 
That's what makes it so strong. But we can see on the south side, Lash has opted for the Mongols here. Whereas on the other side, the north of the map, we see the English coming out. And I'm already loving the way that the aggression is really helping, really assisting. Because they're forcing out this Mongol into a bit of a tough spot. And now that stable going to be forced away from the base. The Uvu goes down. And he heads on to greener pastures. On the other side of the map, though, Louis MT going to be under, under early pressure as Lash continues to apply more and more of the Mongol bonuses to these houses as they start burning down. He's got plenty of horsemen out here, though. Six horsemen at the moment. Donzo going to be looking to try and even out the field. Donzo comes in. Nice big shot. Nice big hit there, but it doesn't take out any horsemen just yet. It's hard to see the health on these horsemen because of the burning... The burning... Uh, the little burning symbol that we get. But now the men at arms moving out. Finding some different spots to attack and looking like they want to be applying some pressure to Core. Core, core going to be aging up very soon. We can see at the moment he's already got the gold for the age up. About 50 gold off it. We're right on board with our players in the north though. We'll get an idea of where Louis at. So far, just looking to try and defend his own base. The Donzos have come out. No real aggression coming out from Louis' side, but obviously he's got the mill set up for his ally. Pumping. Absolutely pumping out cows. Big cow already sitting underneath the, uh, underneath the, uh, Arkham Chapel. Donzo's gonna be able to catch an early horseman. He's having a good time here. Oh! Oh, crackity! Beautiful little surround. Doesn't get the kill, though. He did try and, did try and take that scout out. Jeez, that was close. Horseman on the backside. He's able to it cause quite a bit of havoc. And you can see right now that it's all about disruption. That that one civilization that's not the Holy Roman Empire, it's not the Malians. It is just disrupting. We did see Lash attempting to disrupt the Malians. We saw on the other side of the map, Yui Metal looking to disrupt the Mongols. So that third civilization is all just about disruption here. So if you're looking for tips for your specific strategies here, try and find a civilization that can disrupt the enemy. Maybe French, another good option. A little bit slow. Burgrave Palace is now coming up for both of our Holy Roman Empire players. Looks like there's a little bit of a, a, a lack of speed coming through. I say a lack of speed. He's a little bit slower. Be a little bit slower right now. Then Core on the other side of the map. Core, obviously, a big fan of the Holy Roman Empire. We've actually got double mill coming down from Grackety here. He's starting to face some pressure on his south side. Louis pushing in towards him. So we've got a little bit of a... Mo a uh, I was going to say a Mongol mirror, but that's not the case. Rather, the uh, a a Malian mirror here. Both of the Malians on this side of the map. The only difference is the Holy Roman Empire are the pocket for the north side team. South side team, he's on the flank. And now those age-ups starting to come through. We can see a little bit of a difference in the landmarks as well. Crackety opting for the Mansa Quarry. And the trade already coming through. We see B dropping down a market early on. Uh, I, I think what he's actually doing here is he's helping out a teammate. So, uh, Louis probably is going to be doing the trade very, very shortly. And he'll be putting down markets immediately next to this market here. Uh, and then creating his own market in this corner that he can trade with. So, pretty smart move there. But now, we can see the men at arm numbers for Core starting to flood the map. Plenty of units coming out for him. Nothing in queue at the moment. No real need. He's got, he's got more than enough. Now, there's not going to be any Imperial Age coming through for Core here. He's just going to be staying in the Castle Age, just spamming out units non-stop. And you can see the production time here, four seconds for each man at arms. The beautiful micro from Yui Metal at the moment. Just being very annoying here, making sure that those longbowmen are being microed perfectly. Down on the south side, more aggression coming out. Looks like it's just the two pit mines at the moment. Four Crackety on the south side. Do expect to see Crackety... Going for a, sh a quick castle age. One of the things that we've seen quite commonly in these 3v3 games is a fast follow-up in the castle age for the respective Malian players. So do expect to see both B as well as... Or rather, do expect to see uh, Louis uh, together with Crackety aging up shortly. The most common thing that we see is players looking to mass up Musafati in the castle age. Very strong unit capable of taking, taking on the man-at-arms. One of the few units in the game that actually counters the men-at-arms. Obviously, the other options are, are things like crossbows, knights. But considering that these are Holy Roman Empire men-at-arms, they've got that extra bonus from the uh, 
from the two, not, not just the two-handed weapon, the heavy maces. That's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, it means that they've got extra damage against heavy units. And we can see right here, Bandit Arms are a heavy unit. Hey, Jump's now coming through for Lash. Looking ahead to the Castle Age. Men at Arm numbers looking really solid here. Both teams just massing up Men at Arms. We even see Yui Metal just going for Men at Arms here as well. But he turns around to fight. A little bit of a mistake, I'd say, just considering the fact that there is... There is Lance Connect mixed in. Three Lance Connect at the moment. He's actually focusing down the individual Lance Connect rather than the group... Or rather, the uh, individual Men at Arms rather than the group of them. The core making a bit of a poor decision there choosing to fight. I guess he's just fearful that if he doesn't fight... He's going to be in, a, in an even tougher spot. But look at the Flood heading to the middle of the map. Relic starting to get picked up by Core as well. Keep in mind, a single Sacred Sight is on this map. Which means that once you start capturing that, the victory condition is turned on. And that's when things get really serious. Men at Arm numbers continuing to build here. Heavy Maces looks like it's come through. Indeed, it has an extra six damage. Going to be making all the difference. Wall of Lol in the middle. Scout going to be forced out. Looks like he should be able to come through and take out this Prelate, though, if he's paying attention. A little bit of an early Wall of Lol there. But now together, the Men at Arms and Lanch Connect looking to hold on this front. Age up coming through from Lash. Down on the south side, we do see he's got the stable sitting on the Uvu. And it looks like it's been a, a, a pretty even battle here. But I feel like B is still pulling up ahead at the moment. Our purple Holy Roman Empire player is going to force back Core away from the center and the sacred site in the middle. Now begins getting captured by the south team. An outpost as well from Lash looking to secure this up. Off to an early good start here. And the crossbows are going to be coming out from Lash. I'm liking this a lot. Think about the... the from the macro perspective, how smart it is picking the Mongols here. You pick the Mongols, you look to be really aggressive early on in the game. Force your enemy uh, your enemy to make uh, Donzos, and then go up to the Castle Age for crossbows. Crossbows do very well against those men at arms. As long as you can maintain decent numbers. Now those villagers going to get forced back. Sacred Sight never actually being captured. In fact, we see the inverse now. We see a purple prelate looking to capture up the Sacred Sight. New relic being pushed down. Men at arms moving forward. Lack of crossbows here in the center going to be hurting him. Louis sending off some gold. We've got trade being established on the backside. We'll check in with it shortly. But for the moment on the front, the crossbows looking to try their best to help out on the front, but the longbowmen going to be doing plenty of work here, just picking off the crossbows, doing a decent job here. And now Crackity going to be going up to the Castle Age as well. Farimba Garrison, I'm suspecting, is going to be coming down. Let's have a look and see if we can spot it out. There it is. Farimba Garrison now for Crackity here. Longbowman numbers. Going to be all that he needs to push back these crossbows. So maybe a little bit of miss, a little bit of miss micro here from Core. Perhaps should be focusing on that. But the trader numbers are looking pretty solid. Let's take a look at Louis and see what he's got coming in. Tw Twenty-six traders already for Louis. Huge amount of traders coming in. Each trader picking up two hundred and sixteen gold. Not a bad little effort right there. And the sacred site in the center is now captured for our team in the north. Relic's getting picked up. What is his gold per minute looking like? He's, he's already on 2k gold a minute. 28 traders behind this. Now, typically we do see the Malian player looking to go up to the Castle Age and then massing up Musafati, the same way that we've seen Crackity do that. But look at Louis, not intent in aging on, on aging up at all. Instead, just still slinging out resources to his teammates, both Yui Metal, picking up food and gold here. Six. Oh my lord. Look at the look at the markets that he's got. Making six traders non-stop here. Toll outposts. He's actually misplaced this first toll outpost. Second one gonna be picking up plenty though. A little bit of a raid coming in. Let's check in with the toll outpost and see how much these guys are receiving. Ten food, twenty-one gold. For making these stops. By the time he gets to the end of the route, he's made three stops. Ideally you'd love to see five. Numbers looking pretty good here. Just pumping out resources non-stop. I'm, I'm loving this uh, this opening. And th this obviously favors the team in the north massively. This is, this is huge. Uh, ju just the fact that he's got this many traders out at this point and he's trading so heavily is crazy. 43 traders. And this came out of nowhere. We, I mean, we talked about it earlier, the fact that he was going to be looking to get into trade. But this is just a whole nother thing. 
little bit of a push coming in on that north side. Keep in mind, the sacred site continues to be ticking. Eight minutes on that sacred site counter for the moment. Slowly working its way in. The castle age comes through for Yui. Unit numbers looking healthy. I'm curious if I close this, can I see? Yeah, I can. Oh, that's a, that's that's a little bit weird. We, we don't actually get to see the the unit numbers for our our team here over on the right. Uh, I, I'm trying to see if I if I close this whether it shows, but it doesn't. All right, well, plenty of units continuing to pump forward now. Core just making non-stop progress. Look at look at the amount of units he's got in queue here. Just just rallying units towards the enemy base. He's found the trade now. Men at arms, Lange Connect getting together. Working through all of the forces that are over here. The number one focus for me would be this market. You take out this market, and that trade gets shut down completely. Those traders stand still when that happens. They get they get a little bit confused. They're not sure exactly what they should be doing. And Louis at the moment sitting on 5k. So four point, there you go, 4.8k gold a minute for a brief second there. Men at arms just continuing to rally across the map non-stop towards the enemy base. And with that, almost certainly the market going to be going down. 55 traders still alive for Louis at the moment. Age up comes through. It's going to be the Faruma Garrison. No surprises there. And it goes down. And all the traders going to be have to, having to be heading to another tr to another market and indeed the new market has been set here not the most efficient trade though you can see only 37 gold coming through now for louis on his traders so even though he's got 55 traders this is a very suboptimal trade line so he's going to need to expand out as quickly as possible needs to begin sending villagers across the map right now just take take two villagers and move them right back into this corner and at arms Looking to try and clean up the front line, but the Lance Connect numbers are pr pretty solid here. He gets great connections. Plus one coming through for the Longbows. Still yet to get that plus two range attack. It's not going to matter. The Lance Connect's very effective at dealing with these men at arms. Have a look at the damage on the Lance Connect. 18 damage against only four melee armor. In addition to that, they've also got the AoE attack. More Lance Connect coming through. Men at arms do not want to fight them. If they do, it's not going to be an effective trade. But still, when you've got the numbers like this, I guess it makes sense. You can just hear them screaming in all directions. The Holy Roman Empire. Central Sacred Site starting to get kept down. It's really important when, you, when you're playing 3v3s like this, especially on a map like King of the Hill. You want to try your best to secure up these sacred sites. And do, doing this right here is 100% the right decision. You can see he's also got the relics inside of these keeps. So it means that additional damage is going to be coming out uh, from those sprinkled emplacements. More range, faster attack speed. Everything is just going really well for those keeps. Now the numbers in the center of the map starting to build for the team on the south. Sofas, javelin throwers, men at arms once again. And Manganel's coming in. Now the key here is going to be trebuchets. You need a lot of trebuchets. You don't want to be using bombards. You don't want to be using battering rams. You need to be using trebuchets. They're the only thing that have got a range long enough to actually deal with these outposts. You can see 10.8 tiles of range. The outpost absolutely shreds through any units that get underneath it. That sprinkled emplacement. And obviously Keep's going to be doing the same thing. But now the defense coming in. They become aware of, of the keeps on, on top of the sacred site. Units coming in from all directions. Sofa, men at arms, Musa Fadi warriors as well. In the rear with the gear, we've got the crossbowmen coming up. But the numbers here looking pretty good for the offending team. Walla Lol goes off, looks to hold it down a little bit. No conversions coming off, at least none that I could see. Still, B doing a decent job on this south side, holding the line. Sacred site standing for the moment. Relic getting taken out, put back in. And the numbers looking very solid for this team on the south side. It looks like the sacred side will be neutralized here. Beautiful job with the Mangonels picking off units on the back. And neutralization is coming through. So perhaps the timing here with the traders a little bit too late, but then we now see markets coming up on this on this north side. So they're gonna re They're gonna begin moving back across. Crossbowmen. Falling back away from the, the men-at-arms and from the Lanch Connect. But the numbers here are still solid. Sacred Sight still getting neutralized. Keeps still yet to be taken out. 
And you really want to start working on these keeps. Even if you take this sacred site, you need to start killing these keeps now. Wallalala attempt. Relic gets taken out. And huge damage coming through here. A lot of losses. These, these keeps just getting so much value. And with four minutes to go, the sacred site is, is switched off. But now, fortunately for Core, the trebuchets are beginning to roll in. And this is really what you need. Ideally, you want to avoid attacking from this angle because of the way the, the line of sight works. You really want to be coming in from this south side. That way you give yourself a beautiful field to work from. But of course, on a map like this, it can be difficult managing it. Trebuchet continuing to work down the keep. I, ideally for B, I'd love to see a town center coming out, out right here just so he can get the emergency repairs under the keep. And that's what he does. He, exactly what he does. The town center comes in on the backside. Emergency repair is going to be enabled for this keep here. Very smart move from him to do this. It's free resources that he would be giving up otherwise. Uh, but instead, calling the Vils to repair the keep up. I don't know how I feel about that. I think emergency repairs, if you can get it through, it's going to save you so many more resources. Give you a lot more effective trading. 6,000 gold a minute at the moment coming through for Louis. Market trading looking really solid here. He's continuing to make traders. Look at, look at the. He's on a. <laughs> he's on 160 economic units at the moment. He's got 30 villages on wood, 23 on food, couple villages here on gold, and everything else is completely devoted to trade. Uh, I didn't realize that uh, the trade was taken that serious, but here we are. Here we are. That is uh, that is that is next level stuff. Sacred site in the center once again. Gonna get captured up a single prelate underneath. Working its magic, waving its hands. Another wall attempt coming through from Yui Metal. Looks like it's gonna be denied for the moment. And the focus is gonna be on this north side. Two out of three players moving here. But at the same time, on the south, Louis gonna begin focusing down uh, Crackety on the south side here. We do see the step right out, gonna get caught out. Sacred victory once again approaching. Men at arms moving towards this north side. They're going to be aware of the trade line. Needing to move towards it. But how do you even shut down this many traders? You kill one and six more pop out. Elsback Palace comes up. Did he delete the town center and put the Elsback Palace in? Is that what happened? I'm pretty sure that's what happened, right? In which case... <laughs> oh, God. Uh, this could be a problem. Just think about this for a second. How, how crazy this is going to get, right? We can, we can talk about it later, but th this is about to get really crazy. I don't even know how you're going to hold this. Nice little effort here from the men-at-arms and the lancers, but um, as, as I mentioned before, you know, you, you take out one and and ten more appear, don't they? Look at look at the trade route coming through right now from Louis. This is absolutely insane. I don't think I've ever seen a trade route like this before in a competitive game. So still needing to get the town center up here. The Ellsback Palace is going to be reducing the damage that these buildings take. 33% less damage from this influence. But keep in mind, is it, is it, hold on, is it 33%? Yeah, 33%. Um, so it, it gives 33% reduced damage. So if you hit it with 1,000 damage, you're only doing 666 damage. And then on top of that, You've got emergency repairs, which is popping off your keep. And then on top of that, uh, you've also got the option for court architects. Court architects is what increases the health of your buildings. I don't know if he's got a university up just yet, but when he does, that's going to be huge. Big men at arm shots now coming down. Look at the mangonels. Did I say men at arm shots? Mangonel shots, rather. <laughs> Big men at arm shots coming in. Big mangonel shots coming in on those men at arms. It was a bit of a swing and a miss, though. He, he went a little bit uh, a little bit wide of that initial position. Now, interestingly, Core and Lash are focusing their efforts here on the English player, and they're clearing him out. But my concern isn't the English player. My concern is the middle of the map, because even more keeps are now coming up on this central sacred site. And this is the win condition. If you can't shut this down, you lose the game. It doesn't matter if your enemy's losing landmarks doesn't matter if you're in their base killing their dudes. What matters is whether you control the sacred side or not. And now more trade coming in. 
Trade is pulling in 85. So they're, they're breaking even at the moment. Actually, I don't even know if they're breaking even just because when it's neutral trade like this, or rather not neutral trade, but rather when it's team trade, it is, you're actually pulling in less resources per, per trip. So I don't think 85 is still breaking even, but it's still obviously very, very good. And now Core pushing forward here. The English base is completely cleaned up. He's gonna need to he's gonna need to move on. So with these villages here, he needs to start dropping down more town centers. If we, we take a look right now at Yui Metal, he, he doesn't have a, a whole lot of resources. First TC coming down. He needs to needs to just spam TCs. Make like five town centers right here. And just rebuild that way. A little bit of a raid coming through, Louis. We're gonna cause a bit of idle time here. Veteran Sofa with so much armor. It's gonna take a long time. But now we see additional keeps being put down in the center of the map. Fourth keep. Fifth keep coming in from Louis as well. Things really starting to heat up. Uh, you know what? This is technically a sixth keep as well. The Ellsbach Palace. Uh, no attention at all is being given to the center of the map. Yui Metal's on 18 out of 20 population. He's basically, at this point, dead and gone. Adding in more TCs. This is good. Needs to, needs to keep adding in more TCs. You can see right now he's sitting on 1,300. Would add three more TCs in right here. And th that's all you really want to do when, you, when you're taken out of the game like this. That's your main focus. Just TCs into villages. That's the only way you're going to help your team. You, you need to just buy... You need your team to buy you time before you can get back online. Don't bother trying to raid. Don't bother trying to force out your mistakes from your enemies. Just make town centers. Make villages. That's how you do it. All right, let's take a look on board right now with B. See how he's doing. As he's got a lot of villagers that are just gathering up stone. All the stone in the center of the map now. Just being gathered up. Look at this. He's taking the large stone deposits. It's another one here over to the east. He's up to 1,200 stone. Adding in more keeps. Additional keeps. Look at the amount of keeps that are coming down here. Six keeps and an Ellsback palace. Not to mention the keep here from Louis. Trade still coming in pretty solid on this backside. But where is the military? From Core, Lash, and Crackety. There's a distinct lack of trebuchets. There's three, but that's nowhere near enough. A couple of traction trebuchets, a fourth and a fifth trebuchet coming out. Now we're starting to talk. This is That's some decent numbers. But you're still going to have trouble breaking this. Not only do you have the Ellsback Palace, you've got court architects and you've got emergency repairs. Attacking in from the north. Feels a little bit dangerous. But it makes sense. Keeps firing off. Relic inside. A total of 12 range on that cannon. Trebuchet begins firing down the first of the keeps. Emergency repairs still not here yet. Need, ne they need to drop a town center yesterday. There's the town center coming through for B. A lot of villagers looking to, looking to complete it. And realistically, at this point, all B needs to be doing is just camping the sacred site. Just stand on the sacred site. And now the push begins. We enter into the cinematic mode. As the men at arms look to hold on. Emergency repair is going to be coming through any second. There we go. Five trebuchets. Six trebuchets. Two traction trebuchets. Firing towards what is the impossible. How do you possibly take this out? Is it even? Is this even possible? Look at the amount of keeps that are coming up here. Imperial Age coming through as well. Another keep gets dropped down. A second keep. <laughs> it's just the infinite, the infinite amount of arrows from these keeps are insane. Boiling oil coming through. And with the boiling oil, it's going to finish these units off so quickly. And indeed it does. Crossbow numbers are very solid. But still a second keep or a first keep not even taken out yet. Only going to be coming down right now. And we hear the first bell going off three minutes until sacred defeat. We bring the UI back in. Slowly they begin taking out the second of the keeps. The trebuchet is working their magic, but remember that Ellsback Palace. Together with emergency repairs, together with that extra health coming through from Court Architects makes this impossible to take. Truly, they are the king of the hill. I don't think there's any way that you're taking it off them. A single sacred site is all you need for victory. 
and victory is what you will get. Lash surrendering. Core surrendering. Crackity here surrendering. And victory going over to the Chinese team. Beautiful stuff coming out from them. I don't think I've ever seen so many traders. I don't think I've ever seen so many keeps coming down. Fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you go over to Twitch. Check out EGC TV. They're probably live right now. Thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you guys in the next one.